it a tougher emotional experience than your own fights, you know, knowing letting oh, her go in there than versus you? Uh, the, the the feeling uh, when I think that would be for anybody. Like I'm a complete wreck when it's me fighting, but I think that uh, my motherly instincts uh, come out when it's someone, one of your teammates or or, or, or for instance like her and such a significant person is locked in a cage with a bear. Of course, I want to get in there and I want to do everything possible to protect and to save. You know what I mean? So, but she's such a stud, man. I don't worry about her not one bit. That's part of the reason why I don't have to corner her. Why I'm cornering her, but I'm sitting there like talking to people in the crowd because I'm so confident in her ability and what she does that I don't have to like pay much attention to it because she's 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 a stud. She's in here right now. Watch you watch out. Pat, <laughs> uh, Pat do you feel uh, like you're getting more confident uh, with your ground defense and your ground game after beating such a tough guy like Shane Del Rosario? Oh uh, yeah, I mean we spent four minutes uh, how about this one? As soon as we hit the ground and if I'm a very conscious fighter. I'm not I don't like zone out and go into like and I wake up with like dead rabbits in my hand like oh god what happened like yeah, nothing like that you know I'm, I'm very conscious when we fell on the ground and he jumped on my back I could hear people in the crowd going oh, fucking <laughs> oh man it's like here he do and I'm on I'm like I'm on the ground getting almost choked going hey well, give me a second like I'm I can I can maybe come out of this <laughs> and then all of a sudden the voices change when the round ends and I stand up and I'm not tired and I'm I've done defense so I defended uh, two arm bars a rear naked choke some other thing I can't name like all kinds of things like that and is my confidence coming is it growing absolutely and the reason why it's growing is it's it's just more time in you can train all day and night but if you don't have live experience with it that's it doesn't matter like my live experience with grappling and wrestling is in the UFC like I'm I'm light years behind everybody now I've got punches and kicks out of wazoo for years but when it comes to grappling the only time I've got live experience is when I'm in a fight that's rough now with the uh, women coming into the UFC this month how excited would it make you to maybe see your girlfriend uh, someday fight in the UFC oh that'd be the best thing ever I can't wait till she starts taking over and I can go sit down and don't have to do this anymore <laughs> like you, you put you put I bet all my dollars on her I'll just I'll sit back and just eat chicken and go yes you got it like no the, the women if you I'll, 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 I'll post this challenge to anyone go to a local show not a big time show go to a local show that's got 10 12 15 fights on the card and let it have one female fighter the card and tell me that's not the most exciting fight of the night and that's every time you go to a local show whenever the two girls get in two ladies get in they start fighting the crowd goes crazy they go absolutely insane it's always they fight they, they have a, a different emotional gene or just something in them that that when they fight there's something comes out of them that us us as men we cannot produce I'm tough rah, push ups but when we fight like we can't there's something else that, that they do that we just can't do that's the best I can't wait till she gets into the UFC. It's coming. Do you think it's some of that's because we're not used to seeing women engage in fights and things like that? Well, that it's, it's a new exciting thing. It, it's it's definitely it's it's kind of like the crowd a few years ago and even still now when they see two guys hit the ground they don't know what they're looking at they they, they see guys they want to see two drunk dudes in a bar punching and slapping each other I mean their experience when it comes to them because it's still new is growing so the ground game they still don't know what they're looking at now we see women fighting and that's just what people are like bizarre like you're not supposed to be doing that aren't you supposed to be like loving and puppy and right. have a baby or you're not supposed to be hitting each other and especially with the fury that you have that you're bringing with it you're not supposed to do that and that that's why I think that it's 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 still new and it's catching on and it's picking up but as of right now the majority of the world isn't giving uh, women fights a chance just yet because it's, it's just it's not natural for them it's actually I personally I, I think it's not really natural for us either that or, or I'm a woman I don't know but like <laughs> like fighting is just that's just strange I at regularly 10 12 years in ask myself on a regular basis what the fuck am I doing this for this is dumb like yes so it's coming it's growing you had a bit of trouble getting here I was reading on Twitter that you had some airplane issues what happened to that very I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, it's known, I'm not a fan of airplanes. I just think it's unnatural for giant pieces of metal to like soar through the sky. Uh, but while we're here, we board the plane and the plane won't start. 30 minutes into it, then it starts doing like, you know where you have the car rev the engine, it goes and the lights start flickering and it goes off. Lights start flickering and it goes off. And we're on the airplane, I'm thinking, they're thinking in my head like, this can't, this isn't. This is bad news. Then it finally gets started. We take off, and as soon as we take off, we take off in, into a holding pattern. 
not before we land, he'll take off into a holding pattern, and then uh, maybe five, ten minutes into the flight, you hear a loud, you could hear wind, and the pilot comes on and says, all right, we're having a little trouble. Uh, we're not sure if the landing gear is up or down. We think it's down. We're going to land, but it might not be down. But we're going to go for it. Like, don't, but don't worry, just relax. We're sure they're down, but we don't know if they're down. Right, so it's just like Die Hard 2, where we find a pattern. And then as we go to land, we're landing on a strip filled with just a row of police lights, just cops and, I mean, ambulance ambulances everywhere and like as we're about to touch ground I'm sitting there in my head thinking this is bad this is bad news we land they get off the plane two hours later they go to get we go to get back on a new plane but it's the same captain and it's the same stewardess as we're walking outside I noticed I was like oh hey um <laughs> You, you're the same captain and two stu from the last flight. They're like, yeah, 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 they put us on a new plane. I was like, nope, same plane. You're not faking me out. No, we need a new, we need a new pilot. This is, you're not faking me out. This is the same plane. And they're like, no, it's different. I'm like, I don't know if it is because the gum I stuck on the seat is still there. Yeah, so that's what that was. That's that's rough, man. I ulcers. My hair's falling out. I'm sweating even thinking about it right now. Have you uh, been in talks about booking your next fight yet? No, no, I have not. Um, I told them that uh, I am healthy. Uh, nothing's broken. Um, I, normally that always happens, the fingers or hands, uh, everything is healthy. I told them I'm ready to go whenever they want me to. If somebody backs out to let me know, but I need a UFC bus ticket to wherever the next event is going to be. I can't fly into it. What do you think of the heavyweight fight tonight, Pat? Who do you, who do you predict the win? That, uh, of course, Alistair Overeem is the, you know, he's the man that we all know and this and that, but you can never sleep on Bigfoot, ever. You can never sleep on Bigfoot. That dude is the biggest, not big dude, big dude of all time. He's slow and he's fast at the same time. He's hard, he's strong, he's aggressive. Alistair Overeem is everything that we know of him, but you can't sleep on Bigfoot. So that, that one's a, a, I'm a firm believer that one, no matter who you are, no matter what kind of preparation you've done, once the bell rings, it's automatically 50-50. Anybody can win, anybody can lose, it doesn't matter. You and I can fight tonight, you, you never know. I mean, it, anybody can win a fight, anybody can lose a fight. So that one, I don't know how people bet on fights. That's you, were, kinda, uh, you were emotional in your last fight, after the fight, uh, you, were, you yelled, uh, can you see me now? What was, what was that? That's because I'm too, I'm too small, that's the only reason why I won. I'm too small for heavyweight. So it's just, it's just that. I know I'm short and I know I'm a little guy, but I'm just wondering if you could pick me up on the camera, if anyone saw, because I mean, everybody, everybody, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the underdog no matter what, all the time. Maybe, and I think it has something to do with the fact that I don't walk around chest bumping people and I'm uh, gonna wait, like, I'm a nice, funny guy. I mean, I just laugh and joke, but I'm just easy going. So I don't think that I, if you didn't know any better, would you guess I was a fighter? Or would you guess I was just some dude who does a lot of push-ups? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think uh, I, I come off as the, the average heavyweight fighter guy who's gonna punch you in the head and kill you. So a lot of people have a lot of doubts. A lot of doubts. Like I said, as soon as we hit the ground, you could hear people on the oh, man, this, here we go with this dude again. So, Have you ever thought about here. dropping weight? Nope. Not even kind of. Cheeseburgers are delicious. <laughs> Am I against dropping weight? No. But I just don't see what the purpose is. Like a lot of people say, I had a guy in the elevator the other day. He's like, dude, you should, could you get down to 205? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, why don't you, man? You would kill it at 205. And that's what a lot of misconception I think is. And I don't know where people get that from. If you lose a fight, going down a weight class is not going to make you a better fighter. How about instead of losing weight and starving yourself, get better at what it is that you, you're better at your weakness. Like if I, oh, if you're gonna, man, you would kill it at 205. I'm like, if I would kill it at 205, what would happen if I went to 170? It would be <laughs> illegal for me to fight, right? I mean, I'm gonna be five foot two, no matter what weight class I'm in. Could I get to 205? Sure, I could be bought, but I just don't see what the person is. Anyone? <laughs> One, one fight that I lost because I was too small. It's so safe one. to say you're sick of hearing that talk and people asking you. Oh, I don't mind. When people ask me all the time, are you going to go to 205? I'm like, yeah. And they really, I'm like, mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. No, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to keep posting pictures of pepperoni pizza. Now, is it, could it be done? Would I do it? Sure. If given the right, the right uh, motivation, but I just don't, I don't, there's no, there's no point in it. There's no purpose. Like if, if no there was like what, a title what, shot on the line or something like that, it would sure. make sense. Why not? Offer me ten more dollars, I'll do it. Yeah, but, it was, but I don't. There's I don't see what the point of it is. I personally like to eat. These guys who are cutting weight all week, they look miserable and they stink. Yeah. Are you surprised you haven't been booked for a fight after such an impressive win last time out? That, that you know, 
or are you okay sitting out for a little no, bit? No, it, yeah, it's okay. Here's here's how the timeline goes. As soon as the fight's over, I'm the baddest dude in the building. Put me in the ring, I'll fight again tonight. But as time goes on, the more time I'm off, the more I'm kind of like, ah, I'm enjoying sleeping in and not running and sweating, and I'm, I'm kind of liking this. So, also the UFC, what they're, are they, aren't they already? They've got shows booked all the way through 2017. Yeah. So if a, if a heavyweight gets injured and has to back out, they need a replacement. Will I get a call? Sure. Will I get a phone call about a fight? Six months from now, sure. But I'm not, I'm, I'm personally not surprised. I don't think this is any any uh, any different uh, than any other time. That win, I mean, uh, win, uh, win. That was a, that was one hell of a punch. But I don't think that that was uh, any reason for them to put me in next week.